So it's hard to find information about how to ship a bottle of cologne. This is a large bottle of cologne. It's 16 ounces. So this is a pound of cologne. And the glass bottle is very heavy as well. This is pretty intimidating to ship. I have to ship it within the United States and I could see where it might break. The neck of the bottle would be where it might break in shipment. So I wanna be very careful because I sold this for over $200 and it's a beautiful bottle. It would be a shame if it was broken during shipment to the customer. So I put a second layer of cardboard on the bottom of the box as well as some styrofoam. Welcome to my channel, La Vie Vintage Rose. If you haven't seen my other shipping video on how to ship Pyrex, take a look at that video after this one. This is a beautiful bottle. I bought it from work. One of my coworkers had hit it, but she couldn't afford to buy it. When I found it, I asked my boss, what was it doing here? So of course I snapped it up. It's such a beautiful bottle. I could see it as a prop in a movie. It would be really cool if someone had like a really beautiful dresser. It would be nice just to have it sitting on a dresser. So according to ship rules, it has to go ground. In case it shatters, it also has to be packed with liquid absorbing materials. My buyer is within the United States, so it's going FedEx ground. And I have to pack it carefully because I don't want to refund the customer. I've had things break, so I definitely am very careful about shipping now. I have to put the bottle into a bag first. They suggest what they call or what they consider a waterproof bag, a Ziploc bag or something similar. And I put a empty cardboard roll from aluminum foil that was put over the cover of the bottle to give it some room in case it knocks against the side of the box. So I'm going to tape the bag securely around the bottle. So I'm taping the poo floaties to the side of the bottle. And I also put poo floaties all around the neck and lid of the cologne. As you can see here, it was custom to this bottle. So I was very careful in fitting the pieces together to make sure that there was no gaps or any room for the bottle to move around and be unprotected. I did have some items break before in the post. So now I'm very, very careful about shipping. It's a shame if something like this were to break in post. At the end of this video, I'll share a few of the items that I shipped in the USPS that arrived broken. I'm customizing the poo floaties to make sure that it fits around here in a nice cylinder type of way so I can wrap it entirely with tape. I put it together first before 
I started rolling, I wanted to have the steps and the pieces put together first. So I'm taping the item securely. Thrift with La Vie Vintage Rose in Los Angeles, maybe tomorrow. Click the link above to the free Libre software spreadsheet that I use to track all of my inventory from the first day that I was a vintage reseller. I don't know anyone in marketing that does not know spreadsheets. As a salesperson, I wouldn't sell something to someone that's never a buyer. Here I'm using some pieces that came with my electric toothbrush. So I'm glad I saved these pieces. I had to make sure that the bottle could balance properly on this. Considered a flammable liquid, fragrances cannot be shipped by air. There is a lot of obsolete information online. The shipping labels have been updated and the old version is now obsolete. More on this later. The shape of the Charlie Cologne bottle is unusual as it's wider in the middle and thinner on the sides. This shape makes it challenging to ship. I want the item to basically float in the middle of the box and not have contact with any of the sides. Then I could sit the fragrance into the middle of everything. Foam peanuts, more paper towels to fill in any gaps in the box and I felt confident this vintage fragrance was going to ship safely. And it did. The customer was very happy to receive a 16 ounce of the original vintage Charlie fragrance cologne. The DOT limited quantity mark a square on point with a blank center replaces the obsolete ORMD marking. This is an international standard. The ORMD marking is now prohibited for use. The DOT limited quantity symbol is the only acceptable marking for packages restricted to ground transport that contain limited quantity consumer commodity materials. As of January 1st, 2021, ORMD parcel post is no longer used by any carriers, not nationally nor internationally. USPS regulations have more specific detailed requirements. So I used FedEx because the process was simpler. Empty perfume bottles are fine. Just package them carefully as with any other glass items. There are hefty fines if they catch anyone shipping hazmat or dangerous goods and not following the regulations. FedEx does have exceptions for those trained and certified to ship 
hazmat, or dangerous goods. Due to flammable alcohol content, shipping perfume requires a TSA clearance and a shipper's declaration. There are trainings and certifications available for these type of accounts, especially those that ship them regularly and internationally. In other words, if it's under five liters or less than 169 ounces, it's easiest to use FedEx ground for shipping fragrances. FedEx does deliver fragrance to Canada. USPS does not deliver fragrance to Canada. Using FedEx ground, it is not considered hazmat. It is a regular package as it is going ground. Technically, fragrance is a flammable liquid. The shipping label is just the regular, normal shipping label going ground. There are no extra fees. With FedEx, you do have to schedule a pickup, even if the box is appropriately labeled. The reason for this is so that the box does not accidentally get on a plane. For fragrances, you just have to contact them for a pickup. When I called FedEx, they emailed the DOT limited quantity label to me. I did a Google search for the this side up label as FedEx does not have that. FedEx suggests using the largest label that fits on the side of the box without wrapping around the box edges. So after printing it, just cut it out, place clear tape over the entire label to weatherproof it. Make sure it doesn't wrap around the edges of the box. This side up label goes on the opposite side, according to FedEx. Both labels go on the box. These labels can also be ordered from Uline and Label Master. Create your regular shipping label for ground transportation. It doesn't cost anything extra as this is a regular package going ground. Ground exempts having to select the package as dangerous goods. The labels and going ground is the only thing different about this package so it does not cost extra. When not going limited quantity ground, or if it is over five liters, then it would be a normal dangerous goods package. USPS has slightly lower weight limitations. If going by air, then dangerous goods does need to be selected. Why is Charlie fragrance so popular and legendary? Stay to the end of this video for a few of the items that I sold that were broken in shipment. There are three, four, five Charlie Cologne selling a day on eBay. Created in 1973 by Revlon, Charlie was the 1974 winner of the Fifi Awards for Women's Fragrance of the Year and also the Best National Advertising Campaign. Classified as a flora aldehyde, the fragrance was named after company founder Charles Rebson as he was winding down his career. Fifi is now known as the Fragrance Foundation. The Fragrance Foundation Awards, the Oscars of the fragrance industry, is an annual event in New York City since 1973. Below are links about aldehydes and more about the Charlie Fragrance and the Revlon Company. 
This set of Bob Bottom Martini glasses are pretty rare. They were very colorful and in great condition. And two of them broke in transit. The buyer was actually really sad. She said, oh, these are so cute and everything. Can I, you know, keep, you know, two of them? So that was very nice. Yeah, they were kind of iridescent too. They were sort of Christmas type of shiny. Anyway, I don't think I would try that again. That's when I first got on board with the uh, vintage dishes because the bottom is much heavier than the glass on top. In order to fit them in the box, I put them one up, one down, one up, one down. During shipment, it was probably thrown into one direction. That's why two of them broke, because two of the heavy side hit two of the light side. So she did keep two, and it was very unfortunate that they broke. This one here is a vintage mixing bowl. This was, uh, it's kind of rare, like I've never seen it before. That was what made me pick it up. But when I shipped this one, I was not really thinking clearly because it's very lightweight. So I was just thinking, okay, I can just kind of pack it, right? It arrived broken. Even though it's light, it still has to be packed just like a heavy glass item. The next one is the last item I shipped that broke. This gorgeous Halloween platter made in Germany, survived all this time. It was a really cute, glossy platter that was about 14 inches. And it was just a gorgeous, glossy black platter. The buyer actually bought this right away. There's some of these on eBay. They're pretty rare and they're popular too because she was very sad too. And it had lasted all these years through all the different stores and through donation and everything. And so I felt terrible when it broke. I want to make sure that I didn't break anything else after this cute ghost platter. Now I kind of allow myself a lot of time to think about how to pack something. If you have any additional thoughts or additional questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thrift with me in Los Angeles. Maybe tomorrow 